correct me if I'm wrong, but like, you know, like now it's like off season training, like everybody, of course, like people take it serious, but like everybody has their like kind of like own like thing that they're on. Bro. But that's the, that's the problem with our, our schedule now. And I think that's what we found out during COVID when there was no OTAs, there was no nothing. And we came back and players were healthier and all that shit too. It's because we all train in our own personal specific ways. Okay. Right. Like that's it. me and like, for example, me and EJ do not train the same way. So us coming to a, a building have to do the same lift is actually extremely inefficient yeah, for because, both of us. Yeah, because not- we got different body types. We like to do different shit. We gain confidence off of different shit. So mm-hmm. it's like we can't do the same lift every day. Me and him, we we got two different strengths. We got two different weaknesses. But it makes you wonder, like before. Were people like were players just not like what did their off season used to look like for players so that this was even put into you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I, I mean, wonder like oh, did guys it, back that? in the day was it, probably, it not yeah. like now off season is like, you know, you see guys out everywhere. Like was it not like that back in the day? Like it just makes you wonder like I, I what mean, that's something we would have to literally check in with like Red. Yeah, Kato like I I'm I'm curious about, to know what it used to be like. I don't I mean I think I think for the most part, I don't think it was as much access to different type of training facilities. Like, I don't think, I don't think it was, I don't think it was a sports academy in Dallas with an apex in Dallas with a LJ L, a, a LJ performance in Houston and a, a HOA House of Athletes in Tampa and a proactive in Cali and a, you know what I mean? Like, there's places all, I mean, I, where I could keep going, X3 and uh, with all the uh, other spots in uh, Miami. Now, P3 in Atlanta is super yeah. nice. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. What's uh, Shout out Lindsay Trainer. She do a good job out there in Atlanta. Um, you know, well, so it's I like. Think, I think back then, though, that's because you're obviously, but right. I think also, too, back then, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not even going to say, like, 10 years. I'm going to say, like, 20 years ago. Like, it was a point where. I felt like, and like I said, I could be wrong, but I, I, it was a point that I just felt like, you know, when it came to training, back then, bro, it was like, bro, either you got it or you don't. Like, mm. I, I feel like guys, I feel like guys, like, and in recent history have been like, you know, in the past, maybe like 15, but like, you know what? I'm comfortable with being sharp, but not being the best. And I think that that to me it's has, a lot of complacency like, right has there. developed has very much developed what we're looking at, and not to say everybody's that way, but developed that oh I got to make sure that I'm training all the time mentality. Because I think I feel like back then, like shit, twenty, like bro, if I'm a star wide receiver or whoever it is, like and I'm playing or O line or whoever it is, bro, and I'm nice. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go work out when I need to. I'm gonna go oh, I guess it's a I can't necessarily say that. I, just think, I mean, I think, again, it was just a little bit more. I ain't going to say it was more mom and pop, but it just wasn't a different situation. Like, Jerry Rice, one probably the greatest halt receiver of all time, for sure. Uh, hit the landmark running uh, two and a half miles up a hill that he found in San, in San Francisco. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of these guys, you know what I mean? Like, it wasn't, it was like, I guess, Rocky-esque, like, when in terms of, like, you know what I'm saying? You but got you your trainer, like every... you got your people that you go back down to, and that's how they train. A lot of times, to be honest with you, they was going back to the colleges. Mm. Yeah. That was a bigger thing. Like, like Freeney was coming back to Syracuse. That's, to that's train. a fact. So, but do you feel like every, you feel like that that type of mentality of if it makes sense, not the iron sharpening iron, but just players going to get the work in. Do you feel like that was something that was a part of the league like almost 15 to 20 years ago? First of all, I'm going to say this. I don't think most players work hard. That's mm-hmm. another reason why I be trying to tell Jada I don't want to come and be a part of that shit. <laughs> bro, you know what I mean? Bro, there's, yo, you know how many people in the league literally pull up to Dallas, Miami, L.A. just to be around other yes. niggas that's lit? That shit is yes. so corny, bro. Like, yes. bro, like, it's, it's weird. Like, niggas are coming, bro. Like, it's the so most, lame. Bro, I remember Debo uh, came to Tampa one time. That was the most... Pop, that was the most crowded workout I ever was a part of. I'm like, why is everybody around? Because Debo is working out at like, what the fuck does him running 200 at the same time as yeah. you got to do with you? It's corny. That's even Weird like people shit. was outside and like no knock to the fans because like, you know, I know y'all going to do what y'all going to do. But like we're at Speed's workout and, you know, like we outside on the star part, like in the little outside field. And people are just like lining up, like sitting and watching. Their situation is a little different. That shit I mean, is I mean, weird. I mean, I put no hate on it because my man Speed ain't here to fight for himself. But 
Jesus. Elite Week is a little bit of a different situation. Like what I'm they got like, going on there over the there. Fuck? They probably told the fans, the but fans yeah, oh, fans. so okay. like different, I it was different weird. scenario. Different situation. Okay. So, like, yeah, I mean. Because I'm like, is this normal? Yeah, my they first got a time conglomerate like, of all the best players in the NFL working out together. And that's what they ad- I mean, it was folks out there, like, with the, and, like, the, you know how you could tell somebody, oh, zoom it when yeah. they hit one of these. Yeah, I was like, yeah, oh, okay, yeah. then. Yeah. I mean, I if just, you got Derwin and Jalen and, and, and all them boys in the same place. Yeah. I mean, that, that Parsons, that that's Stroud, Jordan Love, like, that that's probably going to happen. Yeah. I don't know. I just, like I said, I, just from what I've. You know, noticed or even seen is just like the getting the working culture. I'm not saying that everybody's not, you know, trying to, you know, get better. I just feel like that is very much like a I'm gonna do this particular thing because I don't want to be left behind. I don't know if this is the thing that's taking you over the the hump to go and be that. Are you working to be all pro? Are you working to be? Or are you just trying to look? Another, yeah. You See, you can bo- like in track. I don't, I don't maybe think, if you ain't working think, out, you know. I don't, think, I don't think most. I don't think most guys be working with that intention. Hmm. I don't. I don't. I don't think most people be working with that in mind. Hmm. Like most guys, I don't think. Okay. Because if you're not you working to get better, what you doing? Like what the fuck? I think you could work to get better. You could get better, but I think there's a difference between when you training with intention. Like when you train, yeah. when you training with an intention of, bro, I'm not, I'm not settling for nothing less than Pro Bowl this year, bro. I'm not settling for nothing, that, bro. I'm not settling for nothing less than a starter. I'm training to be a starter this year, bro. Yeah. Like you feel me? Like I don't even think. I think a lot of guys just check the box. Like okay, yeah, I worked out today. Yeah, like oh, I was here. Yeah. uh... Uh, the schedule say uh, we work out on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and I came. So, so I did. So I so I so I showed like it's the same thing as every other job though. You got people that's punch the clock, and then you got people that come in here and try to be great. And you could tell. I just ain't never been like a mediocre ass person, so I just like can't relate. Like, how do yeah, you just like come like half ass some shit? Like, I just don't like. How do you do that? Like, how but do it, you it, just a lot of that shit in my halfway. opinion come down to the culture that's set at some of these training facilities, though, bro. Some of these training facilities is more about what it looked like rather than what it is. And now it makes sense. And like now, to your point, whenever you're talking about like like different training styles, because I just think about. The off season and the places that I have been, and they were two Very totally different. different di- also, styles. I think the part of country that you're in plays a huge difference, bro. Oh, one hundred percent. If you in Miami, y'all getting some dog ass working outside, but y'all not yeah. y'all not gonna lift like that. I ain't gonna lie. No, in Miami they don't lift weights. No, I think it's just a Florida thing because everybody fast. So that's not what's going yeah. on in Miami. <sighs> but y'all, when y'all go outside and y'all on the field, that shit is some savage Work. shit. Florida. It's some savage shit because it's it's ninety degrees at nine a.m. and y'all outside, Hot no matter and it's humid as shit, and don't nobody give a fuck. 